Hi everyone, I see um, a good number of you joining in right now. We are uh, gonna give it one minute to let everybody join in and uh, then we'll get started. And while you all are joining, um, just a reminder, you can use the chat function on uh, this uh, Zoom webinar to submit any questions, comments you have for our panelists today, and we will uh, be sure to either address those questions um, or share comments. All right, we'll just give it a few more seconds. Thank you again, everyone for joining. All right, so welcome to our Stop Food Waste uh, panel today. We are hoping Anav can join us in a few minutes uh, to introduce herself, but I am Amy Takamura. I am the Director and of Wellness and Sustainability for Russian Associates. Um, I am also a registered dietitian with a huge passion for culinary nutrition and how our choices on both a personal and a company-wide level impacts the planet. Um, I am fairly new to this role, so I look forward to engaging and working with all of our clients, many of whom are attending this roundtable today. So again, thank you all for joining. We are looking forward to an excellent session today. Um, I wanna go ahead and now introduce our panel. Um, we have Refed's Executive Director, Dana Gunders, uh, deemed the woman who helped start the waste-free movement by Consumer Reports. Um, she helps train, inspire, and strategize around food waste reduction. Um, we also have President and Co-Founder of Food Tank, Danielle Nirenberg. Um, she is a world-renowned researcher, speaker, and advocate on all issues relating to our food system and agriculture. And many of you know her, Compass Group's Global Sustainability Director, Amy Keister, who is a founding member of Stop Food Waste Day, and who plays an integral part in shaping Compass Group's groundbreaking global sustainability strategy. And there we have Anav joining us. Anav, do you want to um, go ahead and introduce uh, yourself? Sure. Thank you, Amy. Apologies. My Zoom decided that it needs a new password just now, uh, of course. Uh, so my name is Anav Geffen. I'm SVP Chef Innovator for Restaurant Associates and extremely excited to launch this conversation. A very timely and very important, probably now more than ever. So uh, I think we're in for uh, great insights. Awesome. And so Anav, um, why don't you get it started and kick it off with Dana? Excellent. So Dana, hi, happy hump day. Um, let, it, let us grill you a little bit. Um, obviously here we are at Stop Food Waste uh, webinar. Why do we care so much about waste or should care so much about waste? And why do we have a whole day and a lot of activities dedicated to it? Yes, and I love that you do. Um, uh, goodness. So let, well, just to give a little bit of a lay of the land, and I'm sure some of these numbers will sound familiar, but, um, you know, we waste a huge amount of food, right? Um, we care a lot about things like energy efficiency. We don't see ourselves, you know, we don't want to create whole wind power plants just so we can sit there on the other end and blow a hairdryer out into the wind, right? Um, or, or open our windows when we have the heat on. But with food, we kind of do that, right? We, we care so much and, and put so much in it, how we grow our food and um, how we store it and transport it and cook it, you know, how much we put in the cook it. And then at the end of the day, 
we are actually letting about 35% of the food in this country go uneaten. Um, it's an enormous waste. It, it winds up being about over 400 billion dollars worth of food that's uh two percent of the u.s gdp and just to give you a sense of how much food that is imagine <clears throat> a farm that is three quarters the size of california um growing food all of the water you know uses about as much water as california and texas combined to grow that food um and then you harvest it Right, and you are filling a truckload of food every 20 minutes throughout the entire year, except those trucks, instead of um, going you know, to the store or to the back of a restaurant are actually going straight. They're driving all around the country, but they're going straight to landfills where they put food in those landfills. It decays, um, produces methane as it does that, which is a powerful greenhouse gas. And actually that whole process, um, you know, I think this Earth Day for me, the urgency is just it is so much more present. I, I, um, <clears throat> I, had a, I had a really hard summer last summer because I live in, in Northern California and my kids' camps got canceled for practically the entire month of August. Our camping trips, our camps, it, it felt like climate change was so upon us. And so for me, this Earth Day, I just, I can really feel uh, the urgency of needing to act. And when you look at the climate connection to wasted food, it's actually enormous. Um, you know, the estimate is that about eight to 10% of the global greenhouse footprint can be attributed to food that is not eaten, um, which is just, it, that is vast, right? Um, and the reason for that, because I think sometimes it doesn't quite make sense as to why does that have such a huge climate impact, but it's because um, food takes, a, you know, a lot to grow it. It takes a lot of fuel. It um, takes fertilizers, which are very energy intensive to make themselves. And it takes, um, uh, you know, it creates other greenhouse gases in the process. So just producing food, converting land away from um, other things like natural ecosystems and, and, you know, rainforests and all those others to grow food that actually has a huge climate impact. And then of course the methane that I just mentioned, you know, when it gets thrown out. So for all those reasons, um, it, just in the US, wasted food, the footprint of that adds up to be about the same as about taking one in five cars off the road or equivalent to about, about one in five cars. Um, so it's, it's just enormous, it's fast, and it is one of the most solvable problems out there. And I think that's why we're here and that's why I'm so excited um, that, that Compass and Restaurant Associates have, have really rallied around this issue because it's something that we can all do about. And I think in the face of, of so many challenges that we can reflect on in Earth Day, this is something we can really take on. And we thank you for joining us. And, and I think what you're saying and the way you're putting it is what people need to hear because sometimes it feels like we're trying to boil an ocean while people don't maybe understand that it's the little things that each and every one of us can do that will make a, a big impact. And what you're describing is definitely a big impact. Um, you know, so maybe maybe for, um, for our audience, can you uh, describe your role at ReFed um, and some of the work that you're engaged in on, on a daily basis? Sure, I would love to. Um, well, I'm the executive director here at ReFed and we are a national nonprofit focused domestically within the US. Um, and we focus entirely on reducing food loss and waste throughout the, the country. We're the only nonprofit organization who's wholly dedicated to that issue. And our work really focuses on three areas. So one is just providing data and insights. And you can go to our website at refed.org. Um, and you can, we have a, an interactive website that you can really play around with and try to see how this issue, you know, how it kind of fits with your world, right? Whether you are in food service or if you're on a farm or um, uh, other, other places within the food system. So we, we try to provide data on the issue to really mobilize action um, and, and kind of motivate people and, and give them that basis that they need. The second thing we do is we work with funders um, to 
catalyze investment in the space, both uh, private and nonprofit or foundation philanthropic investment, um, because there's so much innovation happening. And um, there's kind of this whole sector growing of, of companies and nonprofits that are trying to create solutions around this issue. So we try to foster that. And then lastly, we, um, we just, we act as a hub and connector in the space. So we hold a big summit on the issue that's coming up. Um, and as well as uh, a network of people, we do a lot of programming. Um, so we, we sort of think of ourselves as a think and do tank specific to the food loss and waste issue. Agents of change. Um, so, you know, what, what can you tell us, the people on the call and, and our immediate circles, may, maybe few things that you can enlighten us of what we can do as, as personal entities and, and part of our day-to-day -day work in the food service to really make a difference. Yeah, absolutely. Well, maybe I'll start with the second part of that, which is more in the work, the work sphere. Um, and, you know, just to give you a sense, I, I looked up some of our numbers and you can find these on our site, but um, the, the food service within the business and industry category, um, and that's just one of the many food service categories, but just to pick that one, um, you know, and, and I'm sorry, I should have added up all of the ones, but um, you know, just the business and industry category, for instance, is producing about $2.5 billion worth of wasted food annually. Um, and that's equivalent to, when you look at it from a greenhouse gas perspective, about 300,000 cars. Um, certainly if you add on K-12 and um, uh, hot, you know, hospitality and healthcare and universities, you know, it starts to get bigger and bigger. So it, it really winds up being a pretty significant chunk. Um, but there are a lot of tools. So, so first of all, some of it just boils down to, you know, within food service, um, some of the best practices, right? And, and just having you know, teams looking at their production schedules, um, looking at their menu design, making sure that they are really reusing, and, and you could probably tell me all about this, I know, but, um, you know, using all of their parts and pieces that are going to be left over. If you have, you know, rotisserie chicken one day, do you have chicken salad on the menu the next day that you can use, you know, if not all of that gets used up, can you use those parts and pieces in another um, part of your menu. So I think really looking at menu design, uh, batch cooking is a big one. You know, are you, are you making huge portions before the day has even begun? Or are you actually kind of preparing things as needed and a more of a just in time basis? Um, you know, things as simple as smaller pans in self-serve situations. So if you have a buffet, you know, do you have a giant, um, you know, bowl of kidney beans that may or may not get, you know, taken off the salad bar? Or do you have a smaller bowl that, yes, may, may get replenished um, a little bit more, but actually allows you to use that food um, as, rather than throwing it out? Um, and then just looking at sort of your requirements at end of service, you know, in food service, um, one of the common stories I hear is that it's really hard to keep the same amount of options up, you know, at 1.59 p.m. at the end as it is at noon. And so if there can be some leeway to maybe reduce the number of items that are available, you know, maybe allow for more like um, individual, you know, sandwich making rather than prep sandwiches or kind of one-on-one, -on -one, you know, prepped things, but really looking at that end of ser service period and what can be done there as well. Um, and then things like, you know, are you offering samples, you know, or can you cycle your menus in a way that will be useful? And lastly, I will say probably my most, one of my most passionate topics is looking at portion sizes. Um, we give out huge portions in this country. Um, not everyone eats them, not everyone wants them, even if they are eating them, maybe it's not best for their day or their performance. Um, and so, you know, I think taking a look at portions and just how we do that um, is, is really critical as well. Amazing insights. And even though we may be aware to some of them, it needs to be a focal point 
at all times. So yeah. thank you so much, Dana. Uh, and then, and sorry, maybe if I can just add one last thing would be, you know, I know for a lot of your clients, they have huge, you know, a huge staff that they're working with probably on a lot of things. And so, um, you know, using food as a way to educate your employees and kind of people love tips and tricks, uh, uh, you know, to learn about how to cook better, how to store their food better. It saves them money. So really, you know, there's sort of this whole other um bunch of stuff that you can do to educate your own employees on how they're handling their food at work, but also at home. Well said, thank you. We have our job cut out for us, <laughs> that's for sure. Amy, I'm handing it over to you. Awesome, and thank you, Dana. I think what you said about portion sizes really does kind of hit home for me as well, You know, being a dietitian and everything from that lens. Um, so definitely an easy, easy tip, you know, just reducing the, the diameter of a plate can have uh, drastic impacts on, you know, food waste and food loss. Um, all right, so now uh, I, I wanna introduce Danny. She was not able to join us in person today, um, but we did have the chance to chat with her earlier and we want to um, show you all what she had to say. All right, so Danny, would you please describe Food Tank and some of the work you are doing? Sure. Thanks so much, Amy. It's a real honor to be here. You know, Food Tank is a research and advocacy organization, and we're really devoted to telling stories of hope and success in food systems, both internationally and domestically. We do this in a bunch of different ways. We have a very robust news website where we're publishing daily, uh, you know, 365 days a year, really sharing uh, stories from all over the world. Uh, and, and making sure that we inspire people, that we activate people, that they have um, uh, the tools they need to really think about food systems differently. Um, one of the issues that we focused on since our inception nine years ago is is the uh, the the you know, solutions and the problems around food loss and food waste and why it's so important that we we come up with ways to solve this problem. And it's, you know, such an honor to to be part of a, a, a group of people all over the world who are working for solutions to make sure that we don't waste food, that we that we honor the work that farmers and farm workers do um, to make sure that we're all fed. And so, you know, it's been a really important issue for us since the very beginning. 100% agree and very well said. Um, so what are your expert thoughts um, on food systems as we you know, emerge from COVID? It's so interesting. Food Tank had this incredible opportunity uh, throughout the pandemic to interview you know, via live stream experts from all over the world farmers, uh, women farmers in, in places like Kenya who were you know, dealing with how to grow food in, in urban areas. We talked to farmers market managers in the Midwest. We talked to the chief economists at the UN Food and Agriculture Organization, really collecting their thoughts about how we can emerge from this pandemic in a way that is, is uh, positive that we make sure that all people are fed. There's been a huge, you know, food crisis during the pandemic as farmers weren't able to get into fields during the, the first part of the pandemic. You know, there's been supply chain issues, as we all know. But what I'm really inspired by is all the solutions that people have come up with, individuals and organizations and research institutions to, to really figure out better ways to solve our, our food uh, and agriculture issues so that we can respond to other global shocks. This won't be the last time we experience something like this. So, you know, it, it's either going to be because of the climate crisis or something else, you know, the war that's happening in, in Ukraine. We really need to be better prepared. And I think one of the silver linings from the pandemic is that we've been, un, you know, able to unveil a lot of, of what was hidden in the food system before. I think people have a greater understanding of where their food comes from, who grows it, who harvests it, who uh, you know cooks it. We've seen uh, incredible innovation around how uh, how we can respond to uh, you know food crises, how we can better preserve and uh, stop food loss and food waste. There's so much opportunity now, um, and uh, you know the, the as. as I've said a million times before, we can't go back to business as usual. We can't go back to the normal we had before. We have to create new systems that really um, make our food systems more economically, environmentally, and socially sustainable. 
Awesome, thank you for that answer. Um, COVID really brought to the forefront opportunities for improvement in really you know, all areas. So um, I'm glad you, you kind of hit on that. Thank you so much. So thank you, Danny. Um, a couple more questions and you really, it's a nice segue because you talked a lot about all the pressures that we are seeing at the moment, but on the flip side, we see a lot of new technologies and new innovations that are popping up to answer some of those white spaces and, and vulnerabilities that have been uh, exposed. How, how do you see the future of food shaping uh, with all this happening at the same time? Yeah, it's such an interesting question. And I think we're going to see a lot of, of combining high and low tech. Um, using traditional practices along with new technologies and innovations that can, again, solve problems like uh, food loss and food waste, that can um, create more equity and equality and justice in our food systems. Um, I think we need, uh, again, we can't go back to, to normal. We have to figure out ways that uh, will we'll push the food system in a way that, that makes it more socially just. And, and I think technology can be a part of that. It's not a silver bullet, but it is certainly a way to sort of level the playing field, um, especially around uh, social justice issues, around women's equality, around youth. Using uh, new technologies can really ensure that you know more people are at the table and i think that's a huge issue right now we need you know all food system stakeholders to be at events like this one to be contributing you know we uh are, are gearing up for cop 27 in egypt and really making sure that youth have a voice there because they've often been denied that so really using um uh our 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 ability as a platform um food tanks ability as a platform to to ensure that uh, these voices are heard because they haven't been for so long. So true, so true. Uh, as you know, or may know, many people on, on this call are responsible for feeding a large numbers of colleagues and customers and diners. As operators, how do you see our role in bringing uh, positive change to the food system? I think you know your your biggest opportunity is to be good listeners. You have a whole generation of of, of new eaters and and um, uh, consumers who want to know the story of their food. They want to know again who grew it, who harvested it, you know how it was prepared. Um, they want to know that it is fair and just. That uh, you know that there's a um a story behind it they they want to know more and so being transparent um providing more traceability in, in what you're providing your 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 clients how i think is going to be really important um and you know th these are folks who you know again don't want to waste food they want to make sure it gets to people who need it the most they want to um have more sustainable food products they want um uh, you know, they, they don't want what their parents want. They want, you know, real food. They want whole foods. They want uh, things that are not ultra processed. So there's a real opportunity to make sure that those voices, those new generations of consumers and eaters are, that you're listening to them, that you're hearing them and that you're acting on, on, on their wishes and their needs and their wants. Well said, the dialogue and communication is, uh, is always key. All right, so now that we um, had a chance to hear from Danny, uh, I want to continue on with Amy Keister. Um, so Amy, can you describe some of the initiatives Compass Group is engaged in and you know what have the results been? Hi, yes. First off, just thanks so much for having me. It's such an incredible panel of women and on this call. Um, pleasure to be able to call both Danny and Dana friends, as well as Inev and yourself, Amy. So thank you all so much for having me. Um, so the biggest initiative I have to say is Stop Food Waste Day itself. Um, what started as an idea, I mean, just a conversation six years ago has now expanded into a global movement. It is now um, recognized in countries across the globe by hundreds of millions of folks and even um, legislation and you know, local political leaders have taken note and declared a day of action. Even right here in New York City, um, Eric Adams was a big part of our event last year. Um, so it, it's just really exciting to see that. But 
more than just driving the awareness, which is absolutely crucial, and that's why you know I applaud events like this, is that we are walking the talk as well in our kitchens. And so we've been, um, we're really proud of our commitment of reducing food waste, which is in alignment with the UN goals, um, 50% by 2030, also aligns with the US food waste and loss um, commitments as well. Um, globally, we're at a 28% reduction. We're a little bit higher here in the US. RA is all in on our state of the art Waste Not 2.0. Um, tool, which has really been a game changer in the industry. Um, it's built by chefs for chefs to really look at changing behavior, not just looking at recording the food waste. And it, it's really had some exceptional results. Awesome. Thank you. I know RA is fortunate to have the support from yourself, Compass Group. Um, and you know, these commitments really show our associates and clients that we're dedicated and devoted to moving that needle when it comes to you know, our environment. So thank you for your answer. Um, and in your new position as Global Sustainability Director, a big congratulations. What opportunities do you see for Compass Group to make an impact? I get so excited about our opportunity because I really think we're so beautifully positioned. Um, we have such incredible, passionate chefs frontline associates, dietitians, and operators, and clients such as all of you who have joined today that are taking time to really do what's right um, and learn more and just see how you can be part of the solution. And so um, I think that we're beautifully positioned that we can really use our scale to inspire and create meaningful change. So I'll take two examples if you don't mind. So the first on the inspiration, and again, I think that food waste day and having these conversations is a great one, but this year and today, we launched our first ever Stop Food Waste Day cookbook. And so we have chefs featured from across the globe. Um, we have Chef Amanda Clark with Restaurant Associates at Longwood Gardens. Um, her recipe I cannot wait to try out. It's coffee ground brownie. Um, it looks incredible. But it, it's inc our chefs portraying some fantastic recipes that also with some tips and trips and just guiding us. I mean, no one wants to waste food. It's just that we're tired and we don't, we're not all chefs. And so we just need to know what is it that we could do? If we have leftover broccoli, if we have extra bread, give us some ideas on what we can do. So highly encourage everyone to take a look at that. Um, so that's one way I think that we can just inspire change even with our um, consumers. But I think probably even more importantly is utilizing our scale. And so we've done this before. And again, Ed Brown, again, fantastic yeah, CEO that's a chef, um, has always been instrumental in our movements with seafood. And so, you know, Compass was the first to go all in with Monterey Bay Aquarium, not looking at the what not to eat list, avoiding all red. We also were the first to make that movement with the fad free tuna. But so when we make a change, the industry kind of follows. Cage free eggs is another great example. Now that we were the first in food um, service to set science based targets to go all in with reducing our carbon food prime. Yes, we're going to menu less meat. Yes, we're going to menu more fruits and vegetables and whole grains, which we've been doing for years um, in accord with the menus of change principles. But what we're real also going to be doing is having great conversations with our suppliers and really looking up the supply chain and seeing how can we reduce our scope three emissions. So the emissions across the board. And yes, it's great for Compass. Yes, it's great for all of our clients, but it's just going to become hopefully the norm of how business is happening. So really feel like we're in a great opportunity to create some fantastic change. One, using our scale, and then the other, right, just keep inspiring. I mean, our chefs are just amazing folks. I could not agree more. Uh, and you make some great points there. I cannot wait to get my hands on this cookbook. Um, I'm not formally trained chef by any means, so I will be diving into that. <laughs> so definitely cannot wait for that. And you know, again, we are just so lucky to have your support and really excited to see the meaningful change in initiatives and great things in store for Compass. And lastly, a similar question to Danny and Dana, um, you know, what can we put in place working with our clients to just make a positive impact overall? I'd say let's keep doing what we're doing and more of it. I have the pleasure, again, I can't see everyone who's on the call, um, but I have the pleasure of working with quite a few of the clients and obviously a ton of our chefs and operators. But um, 
I love nothing more than when I'm invited into a client meeting and we're saying Goldman's is a great example where how can we go further? What can we do more on reducing plastics? And so working with them, working with the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, um, Google with going even further, setting you know food waste reduction targets by employee and being able to be part of those discussions. And again, offering some insights with our great culinarians and operators. So I would just say, I think the more collaboration we can do, the better. I mean, you know, what Harvard Business School has been able to do with animal welfare is remarkable. Again, I could I could go on and on and on. Morgan Stanley, I'm really embracing, you know, Stop Food Waste Day early on across the globe. So there's so many great examples of what we can do. And I just think the more we can collaborate, and again, let's pull in Dana, let's pull in Danny, um, which again, I know a lot of you have already. Um, and just what is the problem we're trying to solve and how can we really use all of our expertise on a common goal to really move the needle. So um, any, I think more of that would be great. And again, we just know we're here for you. And again, just put your chefs in those operations front and center because they are a wealth of knowledge and they are so trusted. And so I just think that's a great, they're fantastic change agents for us. Those are excellent action items for all of us tuning in today. And thank you so much, Amy, for sharing your insight with us. And now to close, we're gonna switch gears a little and introduce a rapid fire round of questions with our panelists. I am personally very excited about this portion. Um, so Dana, Amy, and Anav, uh, if each of you ladies could give us your brief answer to each question, um, I'll go ahead and kick it off. So what was uh, your very first job? We'll start with Dana. Um, YWCA pool desk receptionist. All right, Amy, what about you? Oh, um, I feel like I've always worked, um, so babysitting very early, but the first paid job was um, working as a, at a campground. I ran the little store. My first real job out of, outside of babysitting, Amy, I can relate to that, was a bagel store in Queens, New York. And we'll keep the same order for the remaining questions. Um, so who do you look up to? Jean Goodall is like the person I would kill to have dinner with. The great one. Mine's my grandma. She's 105 and a half because once you hit 100, you start counting the half years again. Um, and she drives, lives alone, and she cooks. And she really... Um, my idol when it comes to not reducing, not wasting food um, as she grew up in the Great Depression. And still to this day, um, she'll send me extra leftovers or um, just has always instilled in us not to waste food. So she's remarkable. So not that far away, my grandparents on my mom's side who arrived at Israel escaping Germany uh, with nothing, pregnant with twins and just started life anew. And uh, my grandmother was actually uh, an amazing, amazing lady, but it's my grandfather who had the love for food. So it's a little bit of both. <laughs> awesome. Uh, what is your favorite way to waste less food at home? Um, Mine is being married to my husband who will eat pretty much anything. And so he, uh, I, I like to say, if you really want to waste less food, marry someone who doesn't care what they eat because he's always the guy I'm like, this needs to get eaten. Can you have this for lunch? I'd say the freezer is a great friend. You can freeze almost anything and love it. I would say having teenagers. They're like little vacuum cleaners. So, you know, my nothing is really left. I, I do not like leftovers. And uh, it's just adjusting the cooking to know when, you know, when they're home. Uh, but then it's starting all over again. <laughs> oh, I love that feeding waste to other family members. <laughs> <laughs> and co-workers. <laughs> <laughs> and co-workers. What is uh, your go-to snack? Gosh, I have to be first on all these, huh? Um, yep. Dried mango. <laughs> dried mango is a dried mango is a popular one. In coffee count, I do use a lot of cream, but <laughs> it's probably my go-to. Raw cashew nuts. <laughs> so all three of you travel quite a bit. Um, certainly less so during COVID. But what is one travel tip 
um, around our topic today of stop food waste. Mm. So I actually travel with like a small Tupperware um, that is like purse size easy because I find that there are, um, you know, situations where it comes in, in handy. I would say share. I like doing it anyways, but since you can't take leftovers a lot of times, just split meal share. Um, it's more fun, more fun, and you get to try more food. Is that travel, Amy, packing or travel eating? <laughs> <laughs> If, if it's trouble eating, um, you know, for me, it's always some sort of a nut butter, uh, just in case I get stuck on an airplane and, you know, there's always food packed in little pockets of my, uh, of my luggage. <laughs> awesome tips. I definitely, I'm taking notes here for myself. <laughs> what movie, book, or TV show has made a significant impact on your life? Um, sorry, I didn't prep this one in advance, but I will go with, um, actually waste, which was a book by Tristram Stewart, who he wrote it in 2009 and I read it and it was part of what really lit my fire on this issue. It would be, um, I have the pleasure. So it's Alexandra Stodar. She writes beautiful books. Um, happiness is her main theme and, um, great books for Mother's Day. Um, or even for new grads, but, um, and I have the pleasure of meeting her and she's become a personal mentor. So great person to look up to. So for me, I love Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, David and Goliath is one of my favorite, but I just finished listening to Nickel and Dimed uh, and it totally changed my perspective on living in the United States. So recommended to everybody. And kind of on that note, um, what quote resonates with you? I'm going to pass to Amy first. <laughs> <laughs> Mine, and I'll butcher it a bit, but it's basically, it's Robert Swan, and it's that the greatest threat to our planet is if we don't do anything at all. Like, we think it's bigger than us, and so that motivates me every day, that it's just, if we just do one little thing every day, it's going to add up to a whole lot. So don't get paralyzed, just, you know freeze your leftovers, shop with a list, do one little thing. One of my favorite quotes, there are quite a few, but something that sits with me very, very here is don't necessarily always follow somebody else's foot, footsteps, rather trailblaze your own. Mm. Um, I will go with the, the I think it's, um biblical actually that is uh but I but I think about a lot about my sphere of influence and it's you know the one that is um you know have the um serenity to accept what you can't change the courage to change what you can and the wisdom to know the difference excellent um and lastly what are you most proud of I can go first. Yeah, we'll go in reverse order this time. We'll switch it up. <laughs> Just so they can breathe a little bit. <laughs> um, I'm proud of my kids. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of those little three human beings, uh, critical thinking abilities and, and how they see the world. I'm gonna copy you and have feel the same. Um, it, they, I've learned so much from being a mom and it's definitely opened your eyes and gives you the inspiration to do more to save our planet. I could ditto that, but I'll, I'll go a different direction and I'll just say, I'm, I'm proud that there's, you know, so much energy around the stopping food waste issue nowadays, because when, when I first started working on it a decade ago, it really, it, no one was talking about it. And so I'm, 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 I'm proud, but also just mostly excited and energized by how much the, the mindset around wasting less has really infused into so many different parts of the food system. So that was the last question. You guys can all take a breath. Um, thank you, <laughs> Dana, Amy, and Anna for your participation. It was really great just getting to know you ladies a little bit better on a personal level. 
Um, and on behalf of RA, you know, we truly appreciate uh, what you shared with us today, your extensive knowledge and expertise on the topic. Um, and I'm, now I'm gonna turn it to Anav to close. So first of all, and thank you, Amy, for having a second career as moderator. <laughs> it seems to be like, uh, and of <laughs> course, Amy, Dana, uh, uh, Dana and Danny uh, for joining us. And all of you people that carved this time out of your day uh, to listen to those great things. And I know Dana wanted to add a few more sentences on, on catering, uh, but maybe she can put it in the chat so we will know how to also be mindful um, in food waste and catering. But for me personally, on behalf of RA, just really uh, putting forward um, the fact that we are reigniting our commitment uh, to sustainability in general and food waste as one of those pillars. We fully recognize that as leaders in the food industry, we have a responsibility um, to, to really take our followers in the right direction. And as we all said, live a healthier planet to the generations coming behind, uh, behind us because uh, it's on our shoulders. So um, that's that for, you know, for everybody to chew on uh, and thank you. Mm -hmm.